Hey, what's up, y'all? I'm Bramble Gaming, home of the gaming, and welcome to the first episode of the best of Super Mario Maker 2. This series will actually show off some of the absolute best levels in this game out of the ones that I've played and the ones that you guys have sent me. And may I just say, y'all have sent in some absolutely amazing levels for this first episode, and a ridiculous amount of them, too. I was just blown away by how many were submitted and how many were enjoyable and well designed. You people are awesome. But before we get into showcasing these breathtaking levels, let me explain how the format of today's episode is going to work. Like I've said before, each episode of the best of Super Mario Maker 2 will cover the best 15 levels that I've played and you guys have submitted over the past two weeks. I'll only be covering each of these levels briefly, however, so as to not spoil the challenges and surprises that these levels contain. Also, since one of the goals of this series is to bring those underrated levels the attention they deserve, expect only a few popular ones to show up on today's episode. In addition to this, since you guys submitted so many great levels, there will be a quick highlight reel covering the 10 honorable mentions at the end of the video. Levels which weren't quite good enough to make the list but are still extremely well crafted and worth your time. And if you want to go into this completely blind and play these levels without knowing anything about them, you can pause this video right now and go down to the description, as all of the featured levels and their codes will be listed there. Anyways, I think that's pretty much it, so without any further ado, let's begin showcasing these amazing levels. First up, the level Skip Squeak Switch, while simplistic in nature, is about as creative as they come. By just placing one Skip Squeak, one Bully, and two on-off switches in a small box, this course's creator was able to make a contraption that'll activate on-off switches every time that the player jumps, regardless of location. And after introducing that gimmick in a safe environment, the creator then puts the player up against a gauntlet of puzzles and challenges based around that gimmick that all feel unique and different, each in their own way, making it so that not one moment of playing this level is a low point. To top it all off, Skip Squeak Switch is actually pretty lengthy as well, especially for a gimmick showcase level. All in all, you're definitely going to be impressed by the variety and creativity used in this level when playing it for yourself. Hall of Tormented Shells by the Boss CDA is a morbidly hilarious course that, on top of being well laid out, actually has a surprising amount of challenge to it. In this level, you're required to platform off as Koopa Troopas on claws, some of which are being dipped into lava which causes them to melt and turn into dry bones. Yeah, I wasn't kidding when I said the course's theme is morbid. Regardless, the boss CDA does a great job creating a traditional-esque castle completely based around its gimmick, by constantly slightly changing the type of platforming challenges that the player faces. The whole level is well laid out all the way through, so if you got the time, you should definitely go check it out and give it a try. And speaking of traditional S levels, Thwomp Runes nails that traditional feeling both in its presentation and in the level design itself through the entirety of its challenges. This course uses Thwomps in so many creative ways, such as stacking power blocks on top of these enemies so that the player can safely stand on top of them, allowing for access to higher places which you couldn't get to before. These Thwomps are used in many more inventive ways than just that throughout this level, but of course I don't want to spoil all the surprises or challenges that this one has to offer. You'll just have to play for yourself to fully understand how much discount JB really plays around with the concept of thwomps, and in turn you'll understand how that experimentation really ends up making this traditional level an extremely fun and clever one. Sewer City Galaxy is easily one of the longest and most visually appealing levels on this list, and that's no exaggeration. The atmosphere that ADM Mob sets up in this course is simply amazing. You're put up with the task of traveling through these partially flooded sewers while a serene melody drifts in the background. The platform you hear never really contrasts that calm vibe either. Every challenge can be taken as fast or slow as the player desires, making the whole level feel all the more peaceful. And may I just say, I was surprised not only at how long this level was, but how each section kept on varying up the challenges so that nothing felt stale or repetitive in its vast structure. There's a ridiculous amount of secrets here too, so if you enjoy lengthy open-ended levels with great atmosphere and well-designed challenges, then this level is most certainly one that you'll have fun playing. The level Rainbow Plants by Ray is actually one of the only clear condition based traditional levels that I enjoyed through its entirety. Since courses that use clear conditions don't allow for checkpoints in them, playing lengthy or slow courses based around those conditions can get pretty stale if the player ends up dying multiple times. However, in this level Ray strikes a great balance between difficulty, length, and enjoyability. Even though you're required to collect 120 coins, which does seem like a lot, Rainbow Plants is set up so that completing that task is just fun to do. The aesthetics here are colorful and cheery, the platforming and challenges flow extremely well, and even though this course can be pretty challenging at times, it's the type of difficulty that's fair and well set up. All in all, Rainbow Plants is a great and unique course that definitely deserves more attention than what it's been getting up to this point. Mario's Freezing Jungle Adventures, Atmosphere, and Presentation are truly the highlights of this tricky course. Complemented by a variety of puzzles and platforming challenges, the aesthetic design here is extremely well made. 
It's amazing how just placing different types of block randomly in the ground can really help set up the ambience of the level. An ambience which, mind you, only gets stronger as this course goes on. And on top of this, Mario's Freezing Jungle Adventure is surprisingly challenging, especially for a traditional-esque level. However, the challenge doesn't come from bad level design. All of the obstacles and challenges here are crafted well and flow together nicely. Attributes that all good traditional levels should certainly have. This next level just bursts with so much creativity that there was absolutely no way I could have not showcased it on this list. In Boom Boom Pinball, Smeed has actually created a functional pinball or pin shell machine by using thwomps and seesaws to essentially mimic flippers. By moving back and forth down below, you can control which flippers activate to push the spiny shell up the machine and collect all the four keycoins required to proceed. And there's a bit more to level than just that, but that alone is enough to get this breathtaking concept level a spot on this list. It's so well designed and so creative that I was just like, yeah, I don't care how popular this course is, I'm going to put it in. But please, don't take my word for it, try it out yourself so that you can really see what I mean. Very few levels can capture the traditional dungeon feeling that Bowser's Clockwork Castle does with its outstanding and well thought out level design. The course honestly feels like it was made by Nintendo, that's the quality of design that we're talking about here. By using a clever mix of free scroll and auto scroll, Random Met creates a level whose design and difficulty just flow extremely well. The gimmick that Random Met bases this level around is pretty dang unique and clever as well. It's not often that skewers are actually threatening, but the auto scrolling conveyor belts used throughout the level really help raise the challenge of avoiding them. This course isn't that long and it's not extremely difficult, but everything else here more than makes up for those two minor nitpicks. As far as open-ended traditional levels go for the Super Mario 3D World style, exploring the Lost Piranha Ruins is for sure one of the best that I've played so far. Riley actually uses the semi-solid platforms as great aesthetic devices in this course, which I honestly didn't think was possible with how many restrictions there were regarding them in this style. Yet here we are, nothing in this level feels out of place, the challenges are tough but fair, and above all this the course is extremely open-ended, as there is basically a whole other course on the top half of this level which you can freely interchange with the bottom half in whichever way you prefer. What else do I need to say about this level without giving some spoilers away? It's a course that won't waste your time and definitely deserves the spot on this list. In case you haven't noticed already, a lot of people have been using on-off switches in almost all of their levels regardless of the theme, but switching it up takes those gizmos themselves and creates a whole well-designed traditional level based around their interactions with tracks as well as with blocks. On top of creating a great aesthetic, malt packs in a ton of impressively clever puzzles and challenges throughout the level, a lot of which aren't even mandatory. That's part of the reason why this level is so fun to play though. The extra challenges are as well designed as the main one, and add a lot of good amount of replayability value to this course. For traditional levels based around the on-off switch, switching it up really does take the cake as one of the best that I've encountered, and for good reason. Alright, I feel like I can't say much about this course because I'm afraid if I talk about it like I have the others, I'd spoil the surprise factor of it that makes it such a great level. So I'ma keep it as vague as I can. This is a pretty good traditional level during the first half, but the second part of this course is when it truly shines and becomes an unforgettable course, purely due to how absolutely epic the second part is. Try it out for yourself, I'm sure you'll see what I mean and why I decided to be so secretive about it. Seesaw Woods honestly feels like it could have been a legitimate new Super Mario Bros. U level from Nintendo, and that's part of the reason why this level is so outstanding. The level flows about as naturally, if not better, than all the other traditional ones listed so far, and Rosard Ash nails the aesthetic and vibe that the original New Super Mario Bros. U levels had, even with the design of level secrets and sub areas. The gimmick of using the seesaw with enemies steadily gets more complicated and challenging as the course goes on, making for a nice flow of design that makes the level feel all the more well thought out. This level won't take up too much of your time, but the time that it does will most certainly have been worth it. Dusty Desert Dig by Dr. Skit had me absolutely blown away by not only how amazing this course's presentation is, but also because of the ingenious gimmick and concept used here. The constant use of rails and semi-solid platforms really gives this course an aesthetic design that sets it apart from many other traditional levels. And that's not even the highlight of this course. And I'd love to tell you what the highlight is that I can prove why I put it on this list, but that also sort of delves into the spoiling the fun out of playing the level for yourself realm. So despite my urges to further explain my reasoning, I will refrain. Instead, I'll keep it as simple as this. Even though this level is barely challenging, the ambience, the concept used here, and the lighthearted nature throughout makes this level simply just a fun experience that you don't want to miss. 
And hey, while we're talking about levels with unique and creative concepts, let's not forget to mention the rhythm block level made by Alex. This guy uses a combination of thwomps and on-off switches to create a simple beat which you have to respond to by pressing one of two buttons depending on which sound effect is played. On paper, it sounds pretty simple, but the twists that Alex throws in onto this gimmick and later in this level are what truly make it shine as one of the best and most satisfying to complete on this list. You'll have to play it for yourself to find what this level truly and fully consists of. Even without the twist though, the simple presentation and concept alone make this level stand out from among the rest as a well designed, inventive, and challenging level, one that'll probably take you more than a couple tries to beat. And last but not least, the level back to Game Boy is an easy yet amazingly well designed introduction to the returning Super Bowl power up in the original Super Mario Bros. style. This course first showcases the abilities of the power up with two short yet clever puzzles, and further extends on the concept by morphing into a more traditional level further on. In addition to having a great presentation, the challenges are well set up so that they're easy to figure out but still satisfying to complete. You can bet that this course will be worth your time, just like every single other course on this list. And finally, now that we've covered these 15 levels that made the list, let's quickly go over the 10 honorable mentions. And there you have it, that was the first episode of the Best of Super Mario Maker 2 guys. Regarding submissions for the second episode, they will be open for the next 3 days, so you can submit one level code in the comment below or up to two level codes in my discord using the specific channel there. Can't wait to see what y'all submit for next time. And if you really enjoyed this video, why not give it a like and consider subscribing to this channel, so as not to miss another Mario Maker video or Best of Showcase again. Anyways, with all that said, Granable Gaming, over and out.